Dave Gazelli. So the very first night that I was due to go on air after this training period, it's afternoon, I'm a little bit nervous, I'm heading for this five hour show and um, I try and sleep, that doesn't work. And I'm sat with my wife and, and she has an orange juice and uh, water or whatever it was. And then it got to about six o'clock in the evening and she called me from the bedroom and she was crying and being sick. I went, uh oh, this is not a great time. <laughs> you know, being selfish, you know, why are you being sick? I'm going on the radio for the first time. Anyway, um, the sickness got worse and worse and worse. I mean, she was just vomiting nonstop, almost projectile. And then when I saw blood in the vomit, I knew there was a problem. So we had to call a doctor, an Alan Mann breakfast show jock, you know, my good mate as well. Well, they, everybody was mates. He said, we, we got to get hold of the doctor. Now, there was no reply from the surgery. So I said to Alan, where might he be? And he said, well, he's probably having a drink in the, in the Hermes Hotel. <laughs> so we, we jumped in the car and it was pouring with rain. And we found the doctor having a couple of toots. And I said, Doc, we, we really need your help. And he told me that he was off duty and give him a shout, you know, a couple of days later. And I went, I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying here. And I physically grabbed him and Alan's going, this is not good. You could find yourself in, in a prison cell. But you know, obviously panic had set in by then. Long story short, we put him in the car. Not, didn't kidnap him, but he convinced him to come in the car. Took him back to the house and he said, yep, she's, she's definitely got food poisoning. And the only thing we could think of was it was the orange juice that had been out of the fridge the whole night. Anyway, he says, I'm going to inject her to stop the vomiting and then these pills he said if she's still vomiting in three hours time you need to take her to Umtata hospital now the road between Port St John's and Umtata was not uh, tarred in those days it was a dirt road it was a monstrous road Craig have you, have you been to the, you've never been to Port St John's um, you know you looked over the side and there was this, you couldn't see the bottom of the, the cliff I mean it was it was horrific there was sheep and cows and all kinds of things running across the road so I'm like now fearing that I've got to take you know, the wife to the hospital. So um, he takes the needle, I'll never forget it, out of, the, out of his pocket. He tries to put it into the bottle to, to then, you know, pull the fluid into the, into the syringe. And he couldn't find the bottle. And I'm going, maybe I should just let it die. Would be a better option. Anyway, <laughs> he eventually did it and injected her in the bum. And then I had the, the waiting game. It was two hours and she hadn't been sick. And then three hours, long story short, she, she, she wasn't vomiting. So it looked as though it was okay. But now I'm in such a state that I can't do a radio show now. I, I mean, I could have done, but Stuart Lee, my boss said, Dave, you know what, Look, do it tomorrow night. It's no big deal. He said, in fact, there's nobody to do it. I'm gonna go on and do it for you. He said, so sit and learn. So I did and I, I poured a drink, which was something stronger then, a nice glass of wine. And I listened to Stuart and the very, very first song he played he said, Dave was supposed to be on the radio tonight for his very first show, but unfortunately he's not too well. Kind of, you know, pretended it was me. He said, Dave, this is, this is for you. He played the Commodores, Lady, You Bring Me Up. <laughs> That's a true story. Brilliant. Yeah, so uh, it was the next night that I went on it. Cap, 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 capital.